It's like, but it's the cool snowflake motif pattern. It's available for free on my blog, or you can get it for um, $3.99 on my Ravelry site. All right. Is anybody hearing me now? The audio is coming from the winding station, not from the woman on the camera. All right. Now I have unplugged the winding station. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> All good now. Okay. Thanks, okay. Marcia. <laughs> yeah, that's tough when we don't get our sound situated right. All right. So did everybody see the pattern um, location? This is where you can find the pattern. Is that turning around right? It's like it looks backwards on here, but... Um, you are good. Yes. I am good, okay. So if nothing else, you can go to Ravelry and look up the cool snowflake motif. And Ravelry has both the link to the free version on my blog and also the version, of course, the paid version that's on Ravelry. The paid version is five nifty pages like it includes um, a stitch chart with the pattern for the motif. It includes a join as you go uh, diagram with information. And then pages that aren't on my blog is this fun page that shows different project ideas and a hex grid page for you to work out your own project details. Now on the blog for the um, there's a coloring page that I did for this pattern back in 2016. And so you can get your stitch chart there off the coloring page and you can color it yourself to kind of look at different colors um, to work out what colors you want to make your motif as well. It's like the little fun stars that surround it can also be something you can use to play with your colors. It's like, and I'm going to show you the address one more time for those of you that might've missed it like so you can find the cool snowflake motif so what colors are you going to want to work with it's like if you want three colors it's like in the l array i have to look at my notes here i some people oftentimes want to know how much yarn it takes well it only took two yards for the center of the motif which is just round one round two actually takes quite a bit of yardage because it's all cluster stitches and those use up a lot of yarn and that was five yards and then for round three and four, it took about nine yards. Now, the way I like to work when I join these motifs is I work all my round ones and then I work all my round twos, just depending on how many um, motifs I needed to use. And I just realized that I didn't get a count for how many motifs I have in this wrap. So hang on a quick second here. Because I'll tell you the truth, when I worked this out, I didn't even really do a grid. I just kind of started playing with it and said, oh, this is a good size, and then stopped when I got to the size that I liked. It's like, so there's 14 across the top, and I did a staggered edge on this wrap. So you can see how it staggers out. And each of the row of three, I alternated my three colors of flowers so that it gives it a nice kind of random look when I'm wearing it. And so there's 14 across on the first row, and then there's 13 on the second row, and 12 on the last row. So just an idea of how that all goes together. Now, some of you might not want flowers, but how about polka dots? And this one, you use round one and two, the same color, and then you switch colors for three and four. Um, when you are joining, when you do the join as you go, that's shown on both my blog and in the pattern version that is the paid version. Um, you're going to chain one and then you're going to stick in a uh, slip knot that's going to work, or excuse me, slip stitch that's going to work to join. It's like, but we're going to go over, so we're going to do three sessions. We're going to have today where we're introducing the um, crochet along and then um, next week or two weeks from now, we're going to have a more detailed thing where we're going to actually crochet one of the motifs together. So if you're having any troubles and then, um, the last session, we're going to go over how to do the join as you go. So you can work all your motifs round one and two, 
before we do the join as you go because we're going to work three and four to join things together and these motifs done in the l array are uh, four and a half inches whoops from point to point as far as the width it's like this is one that I did in a standard acrylic worsted weight, and it's about five and a quarter inches from point to point. And for those of you that like thread, this is a size 10 crochet thread. You can see it's really delicate, and it's um, two and a half inches from point to point. So depending on what size you want your final project to be and what you're gonna use it um, with, this is gonna make a difference. Um, and I should have told you, the hook size I used for this size 10 crochet thread was a 1.75 millimeter hook. So it's a fairly loose fabric, but not so loose that it's flimsy. So this is a little firm. This would be about the size I would work if I wanted to make like a table runner or a tablecloth or something of that nature. Um, this one is pretty firm. This is about the size I'd use if I was going to make a blanket or an afghan, and I used an eye hook with a worsted weight yarn. So if you want to make a wrap with a, a heavier weight yarn, you want to go to a J hook or a K hook. Um, with the L array, I used a size eye hook, and the L array is a uh, number three yarn on the little ball band. It's is kind of a DK more than a worsted. So with an eye hook, it gives it a nice floppy, perfect for a garment kind of weight. So if you wanted to make a blanket using the LRA, I would go down a hook size like to an H. Um, these are kind of my three favorite hook sizes to use when I'm playing with motifs with yarn, unless I'm going to a lot smaller yarn size like a fingering weight. And this is, oops, this is the J, which is a six millimeter, the I, which is a five and a half millimeter, and the H, which is a five millimeter. It's like, and usually within those three, you're gonna find the kind of fabric you want. So a good idea while you're planning your project is to um, do some practice motifs to see if you like the fabric you're getting. And if you're doing practice motifs, you don't have to, um, do the color changes when you're figuring out what size of hook you want because that's a lot of bother you don't need now one thing with color changes somebody said this to me the other day like that's a lot of tails to weave in and yes there are a lot of tails to weave in when you do a motif project like this and one of the tricks i like to do is let's see if we can see this is called an invisible join when i do my last weaving in of my tail so instead of doing a slip stitch to the final stitch, I pull my, once I fasten off my yarn, I pull my yarn up through the last stitch and then put it on a needle and weave it around and down into the, the work. And I'll be showing that a little bit more detailed in our next session. Um, the other fun things is when you start your project, and I'm actually gonna demo this. Can we flip this so they can see my hands? Yes like so fair warning yeah it's like if you get dizzy close your eyes for a second and i'll tell you when you open them <laughs> okay can we reach that far yes <laughs> how does that look i can't see my hands yet let's see there we go there perfect we go. that's good okay open your eyes again you can open your eyes now all right so what i like to do is i like to use a starting slip knot that allows me to pull the first chain tighter by pulling on the beginning tail. So when I make my loop, I just tuck it in from the beginning tail. And I've got a kind of short tail here, but it'll work for us. Then I go into here because our first round is 12 stitches. So we're going to chain four. And this is also a yo-yo for those of you that are familiar with that term in crochet is whoops and i just split my yarn hold on there we go kind of picked the wrong yarn with this hook because it's white yarn on a white hook but hopefully you can see this okay so i'm going to work when i start this i did one chain and then three so four chains of, closer to you oh oh there we go right there yep. okay sorry 
Here, let's try this again so you guys can see it better. All right. So I made my beginning slip knot and then I chained one, two, three, four. Now those four that I chained, this first one is gonna be the center of my little yo-yo and the next three chains are gonna count as my first double crochet. So now I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna do 11 double crochets into that first chain stitch. And here's where that adjustable slip knot becomes really helpful because it expands as I'm working these double crochets. And you do wanna make sure you have enough of a tail so if it expands too much, you don't pull your tail through your knot. I got a little tricky here. So I'm, I'm doing that trick that all of you know about where you hold your mouth just right while you're crocheting. <laughs> it's like, and let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So you can see, let me stop here and show you. You can see how we get this big gaping hole that's developing as we're going along. And this is all in our favor because it's going to make it easy to get a tight center to our first round of stitches. And that's really handy when you're working motifs in the round. And you can do this with any stitch grouping that is the center of your um, stitches or the center of your motif, excuse me. So this is counting as our first double, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Up, oh, need two more. And so here are the last, and that gives me 12 double crochets for my center. Now I'm going to slip stitch tightly to the top of that chain three, because now that first chain kind of doesn't exist. It's just a big gaping hole. I'm gonna come over here and slip stitch this guy tightly closed. And now I pull up, I forgot to get scissors out. Hold on a second. All right, so now I tend to pull up my loop and then just cut that tail pull this loop all the way through. And I'm not gonna bother about doing an invisible join for this round because it's gonna be all covered up by the stitches in the next round. So now I'm gonna pull my center and let's see, can you guys see that? Hold it a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, let's see, let's open him up again so you guys can see how it works. All right, so you see how we've got a, whoops, there big center go. open, right there. there we go. And then I'm gonna pull and keep pulling. And now I've closed that up nice and tight. Now, once I close this up snugly, before I start working my next rounds and stuff, I wanna make sure that this is not gonna come undone because this is an adjustable slip knot. This will pull loose. Now, for those of you that prefer using the magic loop where you wrap the yarn around your fingers, you can go ahead and do that. You'll just need to remember that that loop is gonna count as your first chain stitch from the instructions. So instead of chaining four, you're gonna chain three after you've made your magic loop and then you work into the magic loop like you normally would and you're going to um, uh, tighten it up at the beginning or at the end when you finished up your uh, first round. So now I'm gonna weave in my beginning tail. So one of the things, because there are so many tails to deal with, tails to deal with, tails to deal with. I can't say the word tails now. <laughs> said it too many times. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is just go in here and run my needle through the bottom of those double crochet stitches. This gives in, uh, some reinforcement to the center of my motif. And I usually go all the way around. And then once I get to nearly the end of the round of stitches, I come up and I go back just a couple stitches. I, can you guys see this? Whoops, I'm getting kind of crazy here. There we go. So for this very last one, I'm gonna go under a strand and back a couple stitches. Does that make sense? And then pull that tight. And now this guy is snug. He's not gonna come open. You see how 
it's closed up nice and tight. And then I'm gonna trim off this tail. And if you've been crocheting any length of time, you may have had the thing where you've woven in a tail and you accidentally cut your work when you go to cut the tail off. So one of the tricks I do is I pull up a little bit on the tail so I have removed a little bit of the tail from the work and then I pinch the tail between my finger and thumb and then I get in there with my nice little sharp scissors and cut the tail. Then kind of give it a little smush and that tail is all the way gone. See how clean that is? So now you've got a nice little yo-yo done. I go ahead and leave this tail hanging out until I finish the next round. So I will make a bunch of my yo-yos and you can make as many of your yo-yos for your center before you do the other rounds um, when you're making your motifs. And that way, if you weave in your tails as you go along, it's not such a big project at the end of it. But also, um, tail weaving gets a bad rap. Okay, we can bring this back up. All right. All close right, your everybody, eyes again. close your eyes. It's going to be dizzy time again. <laughs> okay. So tail weaving gets a bad rap, but it's actually a really fun way of relaxing and just playing with yarn that doesn't require the concentration that the crocheting actually does. So we've got, we've shown you how to weave in your beginning tail. We've shown you the join. Let's see. And I think that gets us all started. So now it's you guys' turn to decide what you want to make and how big you want to make it. And if you're really not sure and you just want to play around with doing some motifs, you can complete your motifs and sew them together later or crochet them together later, which is another fun project. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. And I hope you have some fun getting your motif projects planned out and started. And I'll see you on the 17th. And then we'll go into detail about working the cluster stitches for round two and round three and then the following week on the 31st i'm going to be showing you how to join them all together thank you awesome right. and maybe you could give us a quick um 10 seconds since we had audio issues for uh international crochet month. oh yes we're celebrating international crochet month here at longmont yarn shop and that's what all this fun stuff is about and this is our crochet along to help you build your skills so come join me i'm andy graves and I love crochet and I like to teach crochet here at the Longmont Yarn Shop. And this is a chance for you guys to take a little mini class with me. Awesome. Take care. Right. Right? Uh, yep. Perfect. Cool. You did it. <gasps> Hi. I feel like I talk too fast. I feel like that every time. <laughs>